Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Discover New Music podcast from us at Full Pelt Music. Shortly, we'll be chatting with Gigi Gold, who we recently featured over on our Discover New Music playlist with her song, Why Should I? But before then, the usual reminders from myself. If you would, please do follow Full Pelt on social media. We're on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And again, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, whatever you're watching or listening. Welcome to Gigi Gold, to the uh, Discover New Music um, podcast. Absolutely delighted to have you on. How are you this evening? Yeah, I'm great. I'm enjoying a little bit of summertime in the UK. It's so fleeting, so it's nice while it's here. Yeah, certainly this year in particular, it has been very fleeting. Uh, It's been a wet one, hasn't it? But um, yeah, yeah, allegedly, uh, summer is here. It's definitely been a nice day. And uh, it's a lovely day to talk to you uh, about everything that you've got going on with obviously yourself as a solo artist um because you know I'm familiar with with you from your time with Lioness um mm-hmm. uh, obviously great to see you branching out and really loved what you've put out so far so really want to delve into it and uh, it's interesting because the first question we always ask on this podcast the discover new music podcast is is to try and help obviously people discovering new music a bit of an intro to to the person that we're talking to um, so we call it the origin story. Um, and, and I mean, most of the guests that we speak to are in a band and you know, that band mm. has got an origin story. So, of course, um, it can, it, sometimes it's, it's, it's you know the same kind of sort of incarnations of the same stories. But obviously, you know, something a bit unique always when talking to a solo artist, um, mm-hmm. but particularly uh, with yourself, Gigi, I'm, I'm, I'm just obviously quite interested to see what the catalyst was for for that change. You know, what is the origin story? for DG Gold? Oh, that's a great question. Um, (laughs) I think really the origin story of this particular project, because, you know, as you mentioned, I had been in bands before. The last one was a band called Lioness with my husband, um, Steph Carter, who used to be in Gallo. So he's been around the block. He's been in music for a long time and took me along for a couple of rides with different bands over the years. And honestly, we had we had made some progress with Lioness. You know, things were going, we were getting our footing, understanding where we wanted to go next and getting a little bit of traction. And then the pandemic happened. And at the same time, we had a couple of band member changes, like the bassist decided to move to Seattle, Washington. And we were like, that's kind of a far commute for a band like this. So it just kind of became difficult you know it just became like really hard to kind of claw things back um and kind of really build the momentum where we wanted to and then at at one point a couple of years ago two and a half years ago my husband changed his job and when he changed his job he got even more responsibility and it just became very apparent very quickly that his time in music needed to maybe be put on the back burner so he could go have his big boy job. (laughs) (laughs) And at that point, you know, um, I started to make some connections with Marshall Records and it was suggested to me like, well, have you thought about going solo? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like going solo? I don't do, I don't do music without my partner in crime. Like that's not how this works. And I don't know, 48 hours later, I looked at Steph and he looked at me and he said, it's done, isn't it? And I said, yeah, I think it's done. So he spent a few months closing out Lioness and I started writing. I just started pulling things from the archive, songs that were never going to be Lioness songs. And it just clicked. Like things just started to work really quickly. Um And it's taken a couple of years to kind of from that first iteration, that first idea of is this going to happen to where I am now about to release this EP. But it's um, it's also happened really, really fast. So the decision to kind of go solo was sort of forced upon me, but it's actually been one of the most sort of freeing, exciting things as well, because I don't have to answer to anyone else which is terrifying, but also really fun at the same time. Yeah, now I'm really glad you used the word uh, freeing because, you know, on the tip of my tongue to, to come back to you with there was 
uh, a question around, you know, it, it seems like, you know, this project, GG Gold, gives you a lot more freedom to what you've had with previous projects. Yeah. Uh, and there's obviously that something that, um, as you say, it didn't take you long, but after that idea was the seed was sowed, you know, it grew, grew quite quickly in your head and you're like, yes, this is, you know, the avenue I'm going to go down. Was that freedom, um, you know, a beacon that you were like, yes, actually, you know, that, that's something I, I'm really interested in? Or was it maybe a bit daunting? Oh, it was, it was so daunting. You know, it was at first because I've always, I've always only ever been in a band and the bands have always been very democratic everybody has a say, everybody has a vote, everybody gives feedback, everybody contributes to songwriting in whatever form they want to contribute. And all of a sudden, every decision is on me. What does it sound like? What does it look like? Um, what does it feel like? Who is it for? Like this, this whole identity had to come out of just me. And so in, in the first instance, it felt terrifying and super daunting because I'd never been in that position before. Um, it wasn't until a little bit later that it started to feel really gratifying and really freeing. And of course, I'm not doing it alone, right? Like nobody, maybe except for like Dave Grohl in the first Foo Fighters album, right? Yeah. Like I think that's an exception to the rule. Nobody does any of this entirely alone. You know, you have bandmates or session players, you know, you've got, um, engineers you've got mixers masters you've got label involved you know you've got you've got lots of people to give you feedback and insight but at first I was like yeah I don't want to make all these decisions <laughs> it feels too hard yeah I could absolutely understand that um yeah and and how daunting that must be and obviously credit to yourself for the bravery to to go ahead with it and uh, I guess this is, this is a good time as well just to to comment on Marshall Records because we've had quite a few Marshall Records artists come on the podcast and you know I would be surprised if you were obviously I would be surprised given you your signs to them if you wanted to slag them off <laughs> but, <laughs> but but we, I've never heard anything negative about this it's always so positive about the again freedom really that they they sort of give to the artists that are on the label they're not an art, a label that really says you know this is what we want you to do they're not yeah. a label that says what do you want to do and how can we help you do it? And is that what oh, you've yeah. found? It, it's exactly that. And it's actually sometimes I'm like, guys, can you give me some feedback? <laughs> like, <laughs> tell me what you think. Um, but no, they've, they are, the, you know, the ethos behind how Marshall Records works with bands is that the band is there to do what the band does. The artist is there to do what the artist does best. And, you know, I'm sure there are going to be instances with me or even maybe other people where they will help guide, they'll help support. They might steer someone a little to the left or the right, but in general, they bring on bands that they believe in. And why would they tell you to do something that doesn't align with what you're already doing? You know, their job is really to support and grow and nurture um, and it's been, you know, it's been so freeing for me to kind of just say, I can make all of the creative decisions and they just tell me which songs they like best. And that's kind of it. And, you know, then I get to do really fun stuff, like talk to people like you and go play yeah. cool shows and, you know, get, get all of the amazing support that you get from a label without any of the dictating type of behavior always great to hear it really is Marshall and you know, a few other record labels that we sort of re regularly talk about it, it's great that there's there's uh, places and homes like that for us because you know you've used the word fun quite a few times already Gigi mm -hmm. and that's what it should be <laughs> yeah, the, oh, yeah what you it should absolutely should be and unfortunately for a lot of bands it, it ends up not being so it's fantastic when you've got um, people around you that allow um, you know a culture to sort of foster that allows you to to, to have fun and do what you want to do so it's fantastic and uh, yeah. um, we always like to talk about the single that we've featured over on our um, playlist now we've featured two over on the playlist so we've got two mm -hmm. to dive into so um, the first one I'm going to ask you about is is your first single um, now I always ask this question on on our other sort of podcast around sort of songs you know from more established bands you know they've got a new EP coming out or a new album coming out and I always say around in my head that first single from any release is always a big statement you know so there's mm -hmm. a bit of a choice on what that song is going to be and I ask how they arrive at that decision and that's the question I'm going to ask you but of course 
you know, for um, Why Should I? That was not just the first song from this EP. It was the first song from Gigi Gold. It was that in massive introduction to you as a solo artist. So, I mean, yeah. how did you obviously, you know, uh, pick that song? What about that song stood out for you? Mm, that's That's a great question. And, you know, I actually went back and forth on the order in which to put songs out over and over again. And it wasn't until like the 11th hour, I went back to the label manager and I was like, I've changed my mind. <laughs> because I think there is so much pressure on, you know, what do you put out? What order does it go in? And particularly when it's the first thing, it feels so important. And in some ways it is so important, but in other ways you're like, well, this is just the first of many. So it's trying to keep that balance. But why should I, I honestly chose that one to be the first single because I felt like it was the best transition from what I had been doing in Lioness. It's probably the kind of riffiest, heaviest, rockiest on the whole EP. And honestly, even the songs I'm writing now, it's probably the heaviest song this project is going to see. And so to me, that felt like a really good transition for the however many Lioness fans may or may not be out there, but it was a good segue for that group of people to be able to sort of get that this is different, but I haven't abandoned guitar music, right? I haven't abandoned some of that rock sensibility, but we're going to do something different after this. Yeah, no, it's really a great explanation, a really logical approach to it. And uh uh, yeah, as you say, kind of a, a great transition piece from Lioness to Gigi Gold, um, because uh, what I've loved so far in the two songs we're going to talk about, but of course as well, uh, I have had a sneak sort of peek at the, of the EP and just mm -hmm. the different influences and, and textures to the songs that are, are coming through and just, uh, I believe it was five songs on, on the EP. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And again, that's where you know, earlier the word freedom sort of came to my head because you're not... Yeah necessarily pigeonholing yourself into this is what I do it's actually well yeah. I'm exploring what this is going to be and it's going to evolve over time and uh yeah I'm, I say listeners definitely need to go and check out these these songs um either on our playlist or wherever you stream or we will get in a moment onto videos but before we get onto videos <laughs> um I'm going to start off with obviously you ain't changed the the second single that came out so mm -hmm. um for that uh I'm going to ask the traditional question I ask of the songs that go on the the um, playlist and that is just you know what can you tell us about the song itself you know it, what 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 is the meaning behind the song and how did it come together for you oh I always hate this question and that's not a <laughs> that's not a you thing that's a me thing I think you know I my my stance on explaining what the song is about is it doesn't matter what I think it's about. What matters is actually what you think it's about. What matters is what it reminds you of. What memory does it evoke? What person are you thinking about when you listen to that song? What feeling does it bring up in you? I mean, it's clearly about a relationship, right? It's clearly about sort of becoming disillusioned with somebody that you once were very enamored with. That moment where things kind of switch and you go, oh, God, you are not who I thought you were. And I'm not interested in this anymore. But I think for, for, for me, mostly, I'm more interested in what it makes other people think or other people feel. Because I think that's what that's why we love music, because it does something for us. It's a very selfish thing, but not in a bad way. It's it's we connect with certain types of music, whether it's kind of the vibe that it gives us that kind of what what sort of mood does it put us in but also what is it telling us about who we are and how we relate to this world I absolutely love that answer I really really do and it's uh, really poignant for me today I've actually been at a, a funeral this afternoon of, of someone oh. um, that I, I connected with over music and I was talking to mm -hmm. the people at the funeral with uh, that you know are remembering sort of um, the the person that is uh, has left us and uh, you know I was saying about yeah, the meaning behind you know music and and yes an artist writes it from their perspective but you know it takes on a whole new life when it leaves because everyone connects with the songs in a different way and and the funeral you know there's a lot of songs in there that um, you know obviously meant a lot to the individual and, and will you know connect forever you know to that individual yeah. when we listen to them and and uh, yeah I think it's, it's a great great thing that you said that you recognize that straight away that yes I've written this and this is what it means to me but actually what does it mean to to you and that is as you 
termed you know that is what music is all about so uh, yeah absolutely love that answer I really really do um <laughs> and uh yeah I said we can talk about music videos so um I'm a massive music video geek I always call myself on this podcast it's because of my my age I'm getting on a bit I grew up when music tv <laughs> was, was you know a big thing so you know oh, I used to watch TRL exactly TRL. come home from high school and you watch TRL who's absolutely hot on there. yep absolutely and uh you know I, I just uh you know we, we always love you know things that we can remember and relate to from the past and our youth and especially our teenage years and uh music videos for me were, were great because of course, yeah, you know, again, to make myself sound really old, it was pre, you know, the internet as the internet is, you know, um, you didn't have the same ability to connect with a band through social media and through other platforms that you do now. So a music video was a way to actually see more into a band, see a bit beyond just the song and, and uh, perhaps, you know, catch what maybe the meaning is or, you know, if nothing else, just to see what the band looked like and maybe, oh, I love, I love that look. I'm going to get a jacket like that or do my hair <laughs> like that or whatever it is. It just, you know, it helped to uh, build that connection really with, yeah. uh, with, a, with, with the artist. And sadly, uh, of course, whilst, you know, technology helps in many, many ways. One, one thing for me that is sort of gone on the back foot a bit is music videos. And a lot of bands mm. these days choose, either financial reasons or creative reasons or whatever it is not to necessarily have any videos now both tracks you've got a great sort of lyric video for for why should i um which obviously again listeners there'll be a link in the bio you can go and check these out on youtube and i definitely encourage you to do so and then there's also a really great video which we'll target for this question on uh you ain't changed now um I always just love to to get a creative insight, and I, I can see you obviously had a lot of uh, input into it from from the credits mm-hmm. of it. Um, so yeah, how did you come up with the concept for this video, and how did you go about putting it into practice? So I again, because I was sort of deciding between which single did I want to really put the music video in. I knew I really only had budget to do one proper music video the right way. I didn't want to spread that budget across two videos and just kind of pick myself later. So when I when I decided which song I had I oh it was so difficult actually like I spent you know when you're trying to create something you're trying to conceptualize something you're like what am I going to do so I kind of just sat down and listened to the song over and over and over again and would just get these little visuals because I'm a photographer as well and I've done graphic design so I'm a very visual person um so I just kind of let the music like fuel that and I had bought these really strange masks from like a Russian or Ukrainian website like super sketchy shouldn't have put my credit card details in there kind of thing I bought them ages ago because I was like I'll do a cool photo shoot with these and when I started to get these little visuals I I love Wes Anderson um I'm I spend so much time watching movies and I love kind of the 60s 70s aesthetic and once I started to get the kind of ideas for the visuals through um everything just kind of pieced itself together and I took it to a friend who's also a photographer Sindel O and she has never she never did a music video before and I just went you know what I think you're awesome and are you up for trying this? And she was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and it was really, really important to me to work with a woman. She's an immigrant like myself. She's Mexican, you know? So it, for me, it wasn't, that wasn't the reason, but I felt really strongly about wanting to work with somebody who I think had a really strong creative vision um, and giving someone a shot because to be very blunt about it, most of the recommendations I was getting were young white dudes and there's nothing inherently wrong with that but it was really important to me to kind of give somebody else a shot somebody I know who was going to work really hard and was really talented and she and I worked together we spent an entire day location scouting talking about outfits and storyboards and it was um a massive labor of labor of love um, from both of us. And yeah, we kind of pieced the story together as we went. We used the song as a guide, but we also wanted it to kind of stand alone as well. So using the, this cat mask and this wolf mask and 
these kind of vintage style costumes and these really kind of intense locations um, in the in UK in the UK. We didn't have to go very far for it, but we we just wanted to create something that felt a little different and put the whole thing through like a super eight style effect, which made it, you know, really satisfied my itch for something vintage and and cool looking. So it was um it was a super fun, super collaborative experience. And it also was a super important process for me to actually be super involved in that, right? Because I was like, oh, I I can do this because I'm actually not like you at all. I don't watch music videos. I'm a really weird, I'm a really weird person when it comes to that. I will listen to music nonstop. I don't watch music videos because I actually don't want to paint a new picture in my head, right? Of like yeah. what the artist's interpretation is. I'm like, no, no, no. Let me let me build my own fantasy over here. <laughs> so it was a big challenge for me to say, how am I going to co-create this concept um and i'm super thrilled with the result oh yeah absolutely the result um looks absolutely fantastic and uh i definitely encourage listeners to to go and sort of check that out and uh you know i, I give great credit to you as well gg for as you say uh trying to give an opportunity to, to someone else and uh just diversify the the talent pool a bit to be honest i mean as i, I mean I, I think you used the the term sort of young white guy i mean i, I cover i think I, going back to the point earlier i cover two of them uh, i don't think i cover the young part anymore unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> but but you know and i agree completely because you know the thing we talked about you know and touched on the ep but we go into a bit more in a second and you know the different textures and sort of you know it's not just more of what we had from from lioness and you know music as a whole for me if everything was made by you know, let's say young white guys or whatever it is, or any any type of person, like it would be quite boring. You need true yeah. diversity to keep music and and other arts as well, like interesting. You know, otherwise it's just making the same songs or the same movies just time and time again. And you know, it's just yeah. let's say for me it's boring. So I think it's fantastic that, you, that you've obviously uh, been able to to give that opportunity out and uh, yeah, again yeah. credit, credit and for that. That representation really matters. Like yeah. you know, growing up there were it was a lot harder for me to find sort of female rock artists. So it's not that they didn't exist, but it wasn't, there just weren't tons of them. There were a lot of pop stars. There was the Britney's and the Christina's and the Mariah's and, you know, but that's not really what I wanted to do. So, you know, that, that representation is important to see other people be involved in that process. And also behind the scenes, man, those, yeah. those vibes change, those vibes really change. And um, it's been great also to have, a female bass player on board shout out to Esme she is just the most incredible bass player ever and such a cool person and you know it's not about excluding anybody for a specific reason but it's about being really conscious about who we're trying to include yeah no uh, absolutely um you, sh you should I mean it, like you say the the representation is is getting so much better now it's always mm. been there but I mean as a so-called uh, music journalist, you know, uh, that you know, writes as well as does these, you know, I write reviews for things. One of my pet hates, and it really, really winds me up more than perhaps it should do as, you know, a, a young, not young, white guy, but <laughs> female fronted um, band. That's not a genre. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does it matter? You know, you're not saying, oh, this male fronted band over there or or yeah. whatever, uh, you know, other aspect of a personality or person you're, you're going to pick on. So why are you using that? Like, it just, it's yeah. lazy writing. And, and like, thankfully, I see less of it these days. But that, that's always wound me up, that one. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, great. It is great. Uh, I, I love um, just, I uh, say, the, the state of the music industry now, obviously, there's a lot of things wrong with it. But it also, there's so many positives, so many positives. Yeah. And um, a lot of that, I think, is driven by just the more um, sort of diverse and uh, equal sort of playing field that, you know, there's still a long way to go but it's certainly yeah. a hell of a lot better than it was. So, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, obviously it, within that playing field, uh, I say, uh, emerges Gigi Gold and the debut EP is called Souvenirs. It's out 17th of July, so not very long now. Uh, all the listeners, definitely get and pre-save it if you can. Again, links will be in the bio for that. Um, first question is, how excited are you to get that piece of work out there? Oh, man. 
honestly, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. This is so exciting. And then there's other moments where I'm like, so focused on what's coming next. <laughs> you know, I think if you're not, if you're not actively sort of playing music and consistently putting music out, it, you, you forget how many steps ahead you have to think, um, how many months you have to plan in advance for But I, I'm just excited. Some of these songs are, you know, so near and dear to me and so much time and so much effort from my songwriters, my session musicians, everybody in the studio I've worked with. Like it's, it feels like it's, oh, it's so corny. I'm going to just hate myself when I say this, but it does really feel like it's a garden and you're finally, I planted the seeds and now I can enjoy it just blooming and see what's going to happen from there. So I'm ready to get it out also so I can move on if that makes sense I know that probably sounds crazy but I'm ready to do more yeah which is fantastic and it makes sense to me because a lot of artists obviously uh quite often feel the same way with uh you know the whole schedule and promotion that goes behind releasing things quite often you've really moved on to to new sort of material when you're still waiting to put out what is uh you know just been sort of not, not sat on the shelf maybe it but it was it but yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's it's great to get out there but you're already like you say eager to to move on um but uh a bit of a uh always a bit of a loaded question this 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 next one to some extent because i just always i'm intrigued just, just to ask you know what would you say listeners should expect from that EP, I mean, obviously, most artists are always going to say it's the best thing you're ever going to have heard. But you know, you know how how would you um, describe it to uh, people that uh, you know are going to be hit and play for the first time on the seventeenth of July? Yeah, that's a good. That's a great question. Um, expect variety. None of the songs sound the same. Um, expect. <sighs> that's such a tough one. I think it's, it's, there's a lot of, um, the, the, the EP is called Souvenirs because it's about memories, right? It's about lived experiences. And so if you resonate with that kind of music and those types of lyrics, I think that's kind of, you know, where it's going to hit pretty hard, that it's, it's really an inward journey for me. And it's very personal and I just hope that that it lands with other people as well and makes them think something or feel something or um yeah it brings up a memory in them or something for the future yeah no a great great explanation of it and uh obviously hopefully whets the appetite for the listeners that they're gonna go oh yes I definitely want to go and check that out as I encourage them to do um and also obviously you know once once you know the EPs out there, and already, in all fairness, um, you know live shows uh, normally follow. So you've already played a handful of uh, live shows uh, un- under obviously the GG Gold uh, sort of guys. Um, how obviously, you know, first question: how how did those shows go for you? Yeah, it was great. So the first show, um, it was so unexpected. I was playing um, at the Hanwell Hootie, which is this incredible sort of West London community based festival. Um, played it a few years ago with Lioness and uh, we walked up into this church and there's seating everywhere and of course my mind is going oh god seating is like just the killer of any vibe for a rock show right but by kind of the middle point of the set everybody was off their chairs dancing and moving and it was just um, that was really wonderful like that was such a such a great feeling that people who have never heard my music before have never heard of me before were out of their seats dancing um and that's what I want like I want people to feel something whether it's that they're having fun or it's just bringing something out in them so that's been just it was such a cool experience for a first very first show of a band um and yeah, I'm just excited to to play more um, and see where it's going to go. I've got an incredible backing band right now. I'm so fortunate to know so many talented individuals um, and they've just been wonderful, super fun to hang out with and just like annoyingly talented musicians. You know, when you look at somebody, you're like, how do you make that look so easy? <laughs> 
Yeah, no, absolutely. As someone that tried and failed uh, to to play numerous instruments in my time, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I can I can uh, understand that feeling for sure. And uh, I'm glad you obviously you said there's more shows to come because that was kind of the the lead that I was looking for. And uh, mm. obviously. Um, we talked about social media earlier or mentioned it at the very least. Um, that's the best place, obviously, for fans, for listeners to stay up to date on uh, what yes. shows are going to be coming up. So I always give out the social handles. I mean, in this day and age, uh, I'd like to think people would find them without my help. But, you know, <laughs> I'm going to give them out because it's tradition and they'll pop up on uh, on the video as as well. So it's uh, on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, GG Gold Music. Um, so there we go and again links in the bio anyway so I probably don't need to read them out but I just like to um, and credit for getting yeah it's the same one across all of them because sometimes I have to read out three or four different ones yeah <laughs> so, yeah it can be quite painful <laughs> um, and uh, yeah obviously encourage listeners headlong to a show follow it obviously yourself on social media check out the EP um, so obviously just a great time in in the life of Gigi Gold with so much going on the, the um, final portion of the podcast always just follows the live sort of chat that we just have um, and uh, it's something obviously with your first shows recently you would have had to have, have considered this um, but to what level uh, I will find out in a moment so as well as being a video geek I'm a set list geek uh, I really okay. love to look at what bands are playing and obviously you know, how they're structuring their set lists and I just like to ask you a very simple question for the the um, segment and that is how much importance do you place into the structure of your set lists and have you got any rules that you tend to follow mm, oh absolutely I mean I spent an entire band practice three hours going through different versions until I was completely happy um I don't know if I necessarily follow certain rules um for this particular project I've decided to keep the energy quite high across the whole set I've got one sort of slow ballady type of song kind of in the first maybe four songs in three songs in I can't recall off the top of my head and then it just the energy goes up and my current set list I am playing a Jefferson Airplane cover and I specifically chose that cover to match the energy of why should I so I think set lists are everything, especially and particularly when you have no idea who this band is. Um, my sign of success at a show isn't actually how many people show up. It's how many people stay in the room. If I start with 10 people and I end with 10 people, that's a success. If I start with 500 people and end with 300 people, not so good, right? So for me, that set list, especially when nobody knows you, is what draws people in and keeps people in. I love the answer and I love the observation there as well around, uh, you know, as as expecting people that don't know you and being able to retain them through the set list. I've not heard that before. Um, and, and yeah, it's just a great sort of uh, uh, barometer of, of the success level of of, uh, of what you've you've put out there. So, uh, yeah, no, really interesting answer. And uh, I've obviously got a lot of interesting answers. There. I've really enjoyed the chat and, uh, you yeah, know, Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, it's been absolutely fantastic. And uh, listeners absolutely need to do everything that we've said. Obviously, check out these singles, check out these videos, check out the EP, follow on social media and head to a show when they do happen. So that is my final message. But I always give the final, final message over to the guests. So what would be your final message for the listeners today? Mm. Be good to yourself. I think that's a fantastic final message as well. Um, and yeah, no, couldn't finish on a better note. So definitely be good to yourself, uh, listeners. And uh, Gigi, absolute pleasure for having you on the podcast. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for listening. I really do hope you enjoyed that chat there with Gigi Gold. Do make sure you check out her single, Why Should I, over on our Discover New Music playlist on Spotify. And of course, follow Gigi across social media to stay up to date with everything coming from her. You can also follow Full Pelt. We are on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And finally, if you would, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, whatever you're watching or listening, because we'll be back very soon with another episode of the Discover New Music Podcast. <laughs>